Hello everyone, this is Mark Hammonds, and I am with the Q Communications Committee, and I am in the back of the exhibit hall at the Q Live booth. And uh, it's a very successful day one for the Q 2012, and I have the pleasure of sitting here with a dear friend, Rushton Hurley, who happens to be one of Q's spotlight speakers this year. So we just wanted to take a couple of minutes and get to know Rushton a little bit more so you guys can uh, find out some of the great things that he's doing. So uh, Rushton, if you wouldn't mind, tell us a little bit about yourself and maybe a little bit about some of the, the work that you do with Next Vista. Sure. Uh, first of all, thanks to the Q folks for giving me the opportunity to present here. Uh, about seven years ago, I had an idea that I didn't want to grow old not having tried. And so I described the, the idea to a friend and uh, he said, I'm going to help you start that. And suddenly I'm starting a business for the first time. Uh, but what it is, it's an online library of videos made by and for teachers and students everywhere. It's free to use, free to contribute to, free to download from. And what we, what we really like to do is like to have kids show their creativity, explaining things that they have learned in their schooling. And so it, it's a chance for kids to teach, to understand that they have something to give others as well. Uh, and we run these little contests and, you know, 90 seconds or less, explain something creatively. And we get great videos coming in. And we, you know, we love to have teachers involved with that. And when you say everywhere, do you mean like everywhere? Like oh, yeah. Worldwide? Or is this the only United States type of thing? We're limited to Earth, for sure. Okay. Uh, Earth but, is good. but yeah, we, we, don't, we don't limit uh, by language or anything else. You know, you know, if we've got some, you know, we've got a, a small number of videos in Spanish, got a couple in, uh, a couple in Bengali. There you go. But yeah, we, we want, we want, there to be very few barriers to learning, right? And we want this to be a tool that isn't hampered by any bureaucracies. That's just insights from teachers and students available to anybody. And so I, I as a teacher who might not have heard of Next Vista before, I come across the website because I hear about it on a tweet. That video is there available for me to download and use for basically whatever I want? That's right. That's right. What we do is we have, uh, we have a set of videos. Uh, you know, we have about 700 videos at the moment. Just about. You know, about that. 705, something. And when you go to our screen uh, for any of, any of the videos, to the right there's a little download here. And that, because you know, we know that there are teachers in places that have less than optimal bandwidth. And it, you know, for them, if they can download something before school and kind of play it off their desktop, that works well. Uh, all of our stuff is, is Creative Commons, so all good there. And, and we, just, we love the idea that it also gets teachers and students excited about the possibility uh, of doing something a little different. Uh, and I find that teach, uh, you know, a lot of teachers enjoy having kids submit videos to us because we'll actually give the kids feedback. And you know, we have rules about you know, uh, honoring you know, copyright issues and, and citing their sources properly. And that, you know, that kind of works well for them. You know, they, they, get, they get a copy of the email we send the kids saying, hey, good video, but we didn't really see a credit for the music. Could you add that and resubmit? And they like that. And so is it necessarily a video contest or is it just a, like a creative outlet for teachers? You know, if I don't have experience creating movies or creating videos, is this not the place for me? Or is this is a, a good kind of testing ground for me to see if this is something I want to pursue some more? Uh, nice. Well, actually, it's both. You know, we do the contest because that seems to bring in a lot of, a lot of content. Uh, but the, the limit for the site is five minutes. And for the contest, it's usually 90 seconds. And, you know, there's several reasons for that. But... Uh, we, you know, we, we kind of distinguish between videos that are made by students, videos that are made by teachers, and videos that are made by teachers working with students. And so we give prizes in all those categories. But for us, the important piece is not that you are an amazing videographer, it's that you have a creative insight that you are, are conveying in some effective way. Well, and having heard you speak and being able to engage with you on multiple occasions, it's great to see your creativeness and your inspiration come through in a project that is helping so many other educators. So I commend you on that. Thanks. Um, and as I was reading through the uh, the pamphlet, what, one of your sessions on Saturday kind of intrigued me a little bit. Is something about dancing and flying yeah. and monkeys or something like that? Can you uh, explain a little bit more? The, the, dancing and flying, yes. Monkeys, no. no uh, monkeys. I might need to revise and you know, get in there. But at at 8 a.m. I'm doing one on, on different devices and what's to come, kind of future of education bit. It's a bit presumptuous, like I know, but I mean, just some ideas. At 9.30 is the one called uh, Teachers and Technology Le Lessons from Dancing and Flying. That's right. And so at one level, uh, the, the talk is about, is about what, you know, what's in our hearts as teachers and how we get reconnected to those things that are, that are important to us in our teaching. Uh, it, it's, it's filled with thoughts about technology, but also about just what it means to be effective in the classroom, to get kids engaged, see their own possibilities. 
I, I think that technology is really uh, more about what happens in the heart than in the head, right? Because we can see that something might be valuable, but that may not prompt us to do something. But when we, when, when we look at a, at a tool or a resource and we go, oh, wow, that's cool, it, it moves us into a place where we become explorers, where we're willing to really explore something. And so that talk is, in a sense, to, to try to bring out the inner explorer from, from oh, our bring teachers. Bring out the inner child again to get teachers to be more creative. Definitely. Once again. I mean, because we, we ask kids to enjoy what they're learning all the time. How often do we take time to enjoy learning something new ourselves? It's that, it's that reflection piece that's really key to learning regardless of you're in the, the student role or in the administrator role. I'm, I'm going yep. back for my for continuing education right now and it's all about that continual reflection piece. So it's good to, that we're not forgetting about that key component for teachers and especially mm -hmm. really kind of harness that and, and, and make sure that it's something that's innovative and, and pushing, pushing them to make sure that they are keeping the students in mind as they're working with them. Well, well exactly, and, and in doing that, uh, I think professionally, not only do they have better experiences, but, but they just tend to be a lot happier with the work they're doing, right? You know, I mean, teachers, teachers are getting kind of beat down in a lot of places. And, you know, to have, you know, kind of a, a, an avenue for doing something that's really interesting and for which your work gets celebrated, that works out well. That's great. That's great. And I know you, you do some more work with teachers during the summertime. You do a, a program called MERIT. That's right. M E R I T. Yep. Um, I know it's an acronym, but I couldn't tell you what it stands for. But it stands I, for Making Education Relevant and Interactive Through Technology. Making Education Relevant and Interactive Through Technology. Yes, I didn't name it, but I do direct it now. So, so tell, us, uh, tell us a little bit more about the MERIT program. Definitely. How can we get involved with that? Well, the MERIT program is out of the Krauss Center for Innovation at Foothill College in Los Altos Hills in, in the Bay Area. And we take, a, a, we take a group of applicants, pick 40 to 50 of them each year. They work together for an entire year. Uh, a lot of it is online, uh, but there are two weeks in the summer that, that are kind of like teacher fun tech camp, really. And so we go all day for, for 10 straight weekdays, and we do all kinds of projects together. We design things together. We learn all kinds of technology. And it's not so much about finding the people who have like the ultimate tech skills. It's about finding people who really want to explore, who try things out with their kids, who are ready to share what they're learning in, in an effective way with their colleagues. That's, that's great, and, and like I said, having, having watched you speak, I, I, I am in, in envy of the fact that you can be so involved and be out there and doing so many great things to help inspire so many teachers, whether they've been teaching for 20 years or, or two years. Well, thanks. I mean, as, as a speaker, not that I sound like a great speaker at the moment, sounding a little funky right now. That's all right. I won't tell anybody. It all happens. But the, you know, I figure if I'm going to get up in front of a, an audience of teachers for an hour, I'd better, I'd better bring something to it. I'd better have some good ideas. I'd better have something that kind of tweaks the heartstrings a bit, something that allows them to say, all right, all right, I'm excited about this. I'm going back into that classroom. I'm going to say, kids, we're going to try something new. It's going to be good. And, and so I, I you know, I, I think teaching a group of people for one hour on one day, give it my all, right? I mean, I'm, I'm a, I am a teacher, you know, I've been on leave for a year and a half, I'm going to probably continue doing what I'm doing, traveling around training and speaking, but, uh, you know, teaching five classes a day for 180 days a year, now, see, that's hard. Yeah. Just trying to bring an A game to one hour of work, you know, I, I owe it to whoever walks in that room to give them the best I can, and, and sometimes, you know, I think I, I'm able to put some good stuff out there. Well, and if you don't know Rushton, this is actually a tame Rushton Hurley. So if you get the chance, I would highly recommend you check out some of his sessions on Saturday at 8 a.m. and 9.30. And uh, it's a great a motivational person that anybody can learn from. So get a chance, check him out. I uh, just want to thank everyone for checking out Q Live. We'll be posting all of our videos for Q2012 up on the website. Uh, just go to q.org slash qcast for more information and uh, look for more great interviews with some of the Spotlight speakers here at Q2012. So thanks for taking the time, guys. Bye-bye.